I've removed the stock battery from the Bolt Pro to get some information from it for researching a replacement one with higher capacity. The capacity on the stock battery is 6 amp hours, so I'll research something along the lines of 10 amp hours or more. Another more obtrusive option is to leave the stock battery in place and add a second battery, which would also require somewhere to mount it. My preference is a single higher capacity battery. Shopping for a battery can be mind numbing. There are lots of battery resellers. Many are based in China, which is fine, but you have to remember shipping from China can take months instead of weeks to arrive. I did come across a reseller shipping out of the East Coast that could deliver in about a week. It was a lot pricier than the ones you can get from China, but the one year warranty made it look like a more reliable deal, so I went with that. Here's the old and new batteries. To fulfill the goal of longer range, the new battery has a capacity of 20 amp hours compared to the minuscule 6 amp hour of the original battery. Other than the capacity and larger physical size of the new battery, all other specs between both batteries are identical. I'm hoping the new battery's higher capacity lives up to its specifications and provides the roughly 3x increase in range, which would be pretty amazing. Fingers crossed the new battery is not a cheap substitute. Here's the original battery compartment configuration. There's some empty space around all sides. I'll see if some reorganizing of parts can fit the original charge controller and the new larger battery. The compartment may need modifications, but I'll work on that as needed. To make it easier for me to reconfigure the compartment to hold the new larger battery, I'm going to remove it from the e-bike. I may have to do some cutting and grinding, and it'll be easier to do that with the compartment free of obstructions like the frame and wiring. I'm hoping the modifications won't go beyond altering the space within the compartment. I'd rather not make changes that are visible from outside the compartment because I want to keep the compartment as stock as possible. It has a nice sleek smooth contour and I want to avoid adding new holes or protruding screws from it. I recorded this clip before the battery was delivered to help me get an idea of how the new battery might fit into the compartment. I cut an 8 and a quarter inch by 4 and 3 quarter inch cardboard template to see how to best position the new larger battery. The only critical requirement is that I leave room for wiring that leads to the charge controller. My pointer finger represents where wires will enter the compartment. Other than that, it's just a matter of determining the least obstructive orientation to mount the battery. Even though I wanted to avoid this, it looks like my only option will be to cut away some of the compartment to provide enough space for the battery and wiring to fit within it. Here's the preliminary modifications done to the compartment. I've removed the recess at the top by drilling a bunch of small holes to create a perforation, cutting in from the edges as much as I could, then bending and breaking off the section to remove. I also removed four screw towers that were obstructing the space to be occupied by the battery. I used a hacksaw blade to cut off the two in the middle of the large flat surface. Minimal sanding is needed to finish up these. The two towers on the edges will require some grinding to get them flat. I've already mounted the modified compartment to make sure everything fits inside correctly and the electronics still worked as expected. The new battery is visible protruding from the bottom and top along with wiring exposed mostly through the cutout at the top. The cover mounts in the same way that it does on the stock Jetson, so removing it requires removing the same screws. I'm not going to explain the cutouts because the battery you purchase may be different in size and you might not require any cutting, or the cutouts could be different. These cutouts were pretty extreme, mostly because the battery was so large. This is the final layout of the internal electronics. The charge controller is laying at an angle as opposed to its usual level orientation. To do this, I had to trim off part of the mounting bracket that screws onto the compartment. This allows the charge controller to be pushed as far as possible to the narrow back section of the compartment. This in turn leaves a lot more room for the larger battery. Everything else is pretty much stuffed into place wherever I could find space, which was very hard to come by. The cutout at the top was necessary to fit the battery, but it also helped provide an easy pad to also run the wiring through. What you're looking at is the completed battery install. The compartment still needs some cosmetic work, but I'll do that at another time. 
Before I put the cover on, I'll zip tie the wiring together as needed to avoid the loose wires possibly getting damaged from moving around as I ride. I'm still contemplating different ideas for refinishing the compartment, but the idea that I like the most is to create a cover made from a durable fabric. I'm thinking I could use a vinyl or weather resistant nylon sewn into the shape of the compartment as a pullover and maybe held in place via elastic straps. I could even get it in a color to coordinate with the red accent on the seat. This battery modification was very pricey, but my justification for getting this battery, even at the steep price I paid, had a lot to do with my passion for tinkering and my curiosity to see what's possible. This is especially true for this e-bike, which I feel has one of the more practical designs for the average consumer. I hope this video helped you gain some insight into what's possible with your Jetson e-bike. Leave your questions and comments in the comment section below. That's all I have for now, and I'll catch you in the next video.